there was something happening that was unexplainable. There were a lot of what I call synchronicities, and I don't know if you know where that term comes from, but Carl Jung, the eminent psychologist, psychiatrist who was um, around the same time as Freud, he coined the term synchronicity. He called it a meaningful coincidence. A meaningful coincidence. I had so many of these things happening, and in fact, I, I suppose you could almost say the time that I woke up from the coma in time to say, yes, I am allergic to penicillin, and then back in the coma was one of those kind of things. There were a whole series of these, these things happening to me, and it made me look at my life and wonder, and really wonder, why am I here? And I just wanted to share with you a couple of the little stories that happened. I might read one out, but I just want to share with you a couple of them. Just to give you an idea of, because I think a lot of times these things are almost humorous. I'm, I'm sure you've all had the, the, these sort of experiences where you can't really explain why, but something happens. Now, I'll give you an example. I was in Sala in northern India. And it's the same place where I met my wife, and I met some dear friends that I'm still in touch with today. In fact, one of them came and visited from Australia last year in December. We hadn't seen each other in the 20 years since we'd met. And I met a, another couple from Australia, and their names were Kai and Vedanta. And Kai had, I used to tell everybody, go and see this doctor that helped me, because I was really sick there with something else when I, was, I had a, actually 11 months of diarrhea. I used to say that when I learn how to spell diarrhea, I'm going to get rid of this stuff. And I didn't, I didn't learn how to spell it, but when I left India after 11 months, it did go away instantaneously. It was amazing. I think it has something to do with water. But I used to tell everybody, go and see this guy, this, this man, Yeshi Dhanan. He's amazing. He's, he's actually kept Tibetan medicine alive. He was the personal physician to the Dalai Lama who lived in the place where where I was staying. And so I would send everybody, I said, it doesn't matter if there's anything wrong with you, just go and see the guy, he's great. So this man went to, to him, Kai did, and he, Yeshi Dhanan, what he would do is he'd take your pulse, he would actually put, they do three fingers that way, three fingers that way, there's six pulses, and they do it on this side and this side. It has to do with the meridian system in the body, and they can tell your health, and he was, he was the youngest person who ever graduated from that class, and it was like six years of study, and he started with something like 11. He had memorized 5,000 pages of books, and it was unbelievable, and this guy did it. He was an amazing man. He would look in your eyes, he'd, he'd do this, and they had a translator with him. He didn't speak a word of English. And then he would tell people their life story and why they had an illness. And what he did with Kai, this is amazing. Here's Kai, he's from Australia, right? He said, through the translator, he said, you live in a warm country, but you come from a cold country. And when you were young, you were poor because you weren't fed right and your digestive system didn't work right. And you would have been constipated. But then you changed your diet and you ended up the other way. And Kyle looked at this guy and went, how does he know that? He was from Finland. He hadn't told the doctor that. He just sat down, and he didn't tell him anything, actually. But he had diarrhea, um, worse than I had. I had it for 11 months because I couldn't spell it right when I was in India. He had it for years. He became a vegetarian. He was constipated all his life, became a vegetarian, and he had diarrhea. His digestive system hadn't formed right. So what did Yeshi Dhanan do? He did the same thing he does with everybody. He gives you little herbal tablets. There's a little dispensary there. They look like rabbit turds. He gave you a series of these things, and he said, he gave them to Kai, because they were going to be leaving in a few days. He said, I want you to take these things for seven months, and you'll be fine. Well, what do you do? You take them for seven months, and you find out what happens. But the story that I wanted to explain to you, that the, these little coincidences, was I was sitting with Kai and Vedanta, that was his wife's name, and their two daughters, who were 10 and 12. And these, these girls, they'd all been in England, visiting family. I think, I think the daughter was from there. And then they left the girls with their grandparents for a while, and the parents came to India, and then the girls came on their own and had a great time with their parents where we were doing some really interesting things. And so I was with them one evening, 
back in their hotel room and they were going to leave the next day. And Vedanta told me the story of her name, which I found out. <coughs> Vedanta, what's this name? She said, well, I've been, I'm a yoga teacher and I have been studying yoga for a long time. And I went to a teacher years ago, an Indian man, and at the end of some period of a course that she did, I don't know how long it was, it could have been a few weeks, he gave me a spiritual name. And the name was Gyan. G-Y-A-N. That means knowledge. She said, I never liked the name, so I never really used it. And then years later, I went to another teacher, another Indian man, and at the end of his course of studies, he didn't know what her previous name had been, he gave me another name, Vedanta, the one that she was using when I met her. And he said to her, you know what that means? And she said, no. He said, it means completion of knowledge. Well, she liked that, sort of tied in with the other name, and she liked the, the sound of it. So what I used to do is I said goodbye to them because they were going to leave the next day. What I used to do is I'd go back, it was probably 9 o'clock at night, I went back to my hotel room, and I would write in my journal, that was what I did. And I was writing this story. And when I went to write the story about her name, I couldn't remember Gion. Just went blank. So I wrote the story, and I wrote a line where Gion would have been. I wasn't too worried about it. It didn't really matter. The story was, was, had value without that. I could have told it if I didn't know it. The next day, I was down for a walk from McLeod Gange, where we were staying, which is up on the foothills of the Himalayas, down a very steep hill to Lower Dharamsala. They have a market down there, sort of more like the Indian part, whereas this was the Tibetan part. And on, I was almost down to Dharamsala, and I ran into a man who I used to see in Yeshi Dandan's office, because I would go in there regularly. And this man was of Indian descent, but he was from Detroit, Michigan. And we had got to know each other because he was often standing in the corner of Yeshi Donan's office with a bunch of acupuncture needles sticking out of his shoulders while he was doing his thing with me. And I'm walking past him and he's with two other people. One of them has silver hair and the other's a young boy. And they both look Indian. And he says, oh, John, nice to see you. I'd like to introduce you to my brother-in-law and my nephew. My brother-in-law's name is Gion. That means knowledge. And I said, oh, thank you very much. I can fill in the blank on my page now. That was told to me the very next day. Now, why would he do that? Figure it out. I don't know. I just thought, that's the sort of thing that was happening all the time. And I'm going to tell you one other story that's like that. Actually, I might read this one too, if you don't mind. Just a little, just a little story. About it. I've got it here. I've got a mark here. When I was traveling in that part of the world, I did a lot of reading. I had, I had time on my hands. I was backpacking. I had lots of time. And you stay in these little hotels. They're very cheap. You can live there cheaper than you could, than you could certainly uh, live here. And when I was in Delhi some time before, I'm, it was one of those, I, I didn't spend a lot of time in Delhi. It's a, a big city. It was hot. It was polluted but it was the place you went whenever you came out of wherever I was in the Himalayas to get back to the next place in the Himalayas. It was, it was sort of the, the stopping off point. And the one time that I was there, I met a whole group of people that we became really good friends. It was just one of those moments in time when you just met a group